Another myth I hear a lot is that CBT is superficial. So, you know, we're just involved in managing symptoms. We don't really care anything about the deeper person. But, you know, originally when someone comes in, we just want to help them feel a little bit better. So we're going to focus on what's going on in the present moment. So I can think of one of my clients who really strong depression, her emotions were just all over the place. And then she felt so bad, she would cut herself. So at first, you know, I'm just thinking about safety. What are some ways that we could help you manage these emotions so that you don't turn to cutting yourself? So you could say that's superficial because it's just, let's manage these emotions a little bit better. Let's stop this self-harm behavior. But really underlying it was a sense of unlovability. So whenever her dad didn't talk to her as much as she would like, that just shows I'm unlovable. So once we got her safe, then it's, let's get at what's going on underneath. Let's talk about the sense of unlovability. You know, let's take a closer look here. Where did this come from? Which is her mom being really critical. So we're able to talk about this really strong core belief of unlovability, where it comes from, and then how she can deal with that a little bit differently now. So it wasn't just surface level. Oh yeah, let's just manage these emotions. Yeah. You know, that, that's so important. If CBT really were superficial, then we would expect that people might get better, but they wouldn't stay better because underlying issues hadn't been addressed. And in fact, the research shows the opposite, that when patients receive CBT, they usually have a much lower relapse rate than traditional psychotherapy or medication. I was thinking similarly that lots of people come to treatment for a problem of uh, depression or anxiety and one woman that I worked with comes to mind where she was very depressed and she was uh, having anxiety because she wasn't uh, comfortable going out in public, getting involved in things at her um, child's school. And even going to the grocery store was a challenge for her. When I took the history and learned that she grew up in an environment that was very abusive and uh, very threatening and there was violence and uh, it turned out the part of town that she lived in was a very violent part of town and so it really wasn't safe to go out but where she lived when I met her was a safe part of town but she was still uh, functioning as if she lived in a very dangerous area. And had, had we not dealt with the beliefs uh, that came from the experiences that she had earlier on in life, we never would have been able to fully help her to reconcile the challenges that she had in getting out and functioning at a, at a high level uh, in, in, in the current time. Yeah, that's an important notion. Not, I mean, what characterizes cognitive behavioral therapy is we look at not just the merely the motivations, but the beliefs that underlie those motivations. And on, then on top of that, as you're describing, Alan, the very forging ground of those beliefs, the very experiences that give those uh, beliefs meaning, that, that bring those beliefs into, into, into being in the first place. Mm -hmm.